Today's appreciation of brutalism, just like the surface of poured concrete, comes in various textures. It is evident that the dramatic visual impact of brutalist architecture has played a major part in the genre's recent resurgence. So, on one side, I see a pop art stylized appreciation from the masses. The clarity and monumental character of brutalist structures lends them an aura of mystique, which in turn elicits a self indulgent attraction. It's a reflex that needn't always be explained, and the detachment we enjoy on social media has played a role in this sort of uh, permissive brutalist consumerism. In its shallowest take, brutalism simply looks as great as it sounds and makes for fascinating photography and cinematography. Whether it's an Instagram account, a gritty music video, or a Hollywood blockbuster, we see brutalist icons being used and sometimes abused to lend their street cred with a mid-century backdrop or the sharp angles in a futuristic scenery, or whatever else is the present fascination. In the end, this is nothing but a desire for the conspicuous consumption of brutalism, as the fashionable, meme-worthy, streetwise currency of the moment. But there is another deeper side to it, of course. Uh, brutalist architects subscribed to the early 20th modernist tenet of achieving social transformation through architecture. Foraying into that mindset can become a rabbit hole, often exhilarating and sometimes even apprehensive of the scope and what it would take us to achieve that utopia. In the first half of the 20th century, there was an urgent and pressing need to change the lives of ordinary people for the better. In the course of attaining that noble goal, we see dramatic conflicts of authority, battles of egos, failures to deliver. But we also see new materials discovered, techniques devised, tools fashioned, metric systems invented, uh, design philosophies introduced. In, in the end, brutalism was the ultimate expression of post-war optimism, the promise of a new, better world to live in. Exceptional homes and facilities, public amenities, monumental public art were meant to become an exorcism of the past and the foundation for a better tomorrow. There's a body of experts and enthusiasts who go below the surface to explore the style's deeper implications. In this, I see a desire to remember the essential, transformative ideals which underpin brutalist architecture and an effort to preserve it for future generations. And seeing that we still live in societies beset with poverty, injustice, chronism and segregation, there is also a desire to maintain the momentum of broader social change to architecture.